do UFOs exist? And could there be any truth to close encounters of the fourth kind, more commonly referred to as alien abduction? Surely they are just kooky stuff, a hangover from the 1950s and 60s. People taking science fiction a little bit too far. If any of this stuff had any truth to it, surely it would be the lead story on the front page of every newspaper, the lead item on every news cycle around the world. What evidence is there, if any? In the language of the US Department of Defense, these are unidentified aerial phenomena. Videos which add fuel to the belief of some. We are not alone. The first incident was filmed off the California coast in 2004, an oval shape hovering, and in the words of the Navy pilot who recorded this, not behaving by the normal laws of physics. These objects are probably some kind of secret military program, and uh, what these pilots saw were, you know, were real. They saw them and they, they uh, filmed and photographed them, and the Pentagon, I'm, I'm assuming, declassified them because uh, there was a lot of speculation going out there. They had already been leaked, so uh, why not come out and say, okay, these, these films are genuine, they do exist, uh, but we don't know what they are. In 2015, pilots flying off the east coast of America spotted this. In a statement, the Department of Defense said it was releasing the videos in order to clear up any misconceptions by the public on whether or not the footage that's been circulating was real or whether or not there is more to the videos. The aerial phenomena observed in these videos, they say, remain characterized as unidentified. We're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Oh, I think, dude. Again, its speed and movement apparently astounding experienced aircraft. I do, I do But if there's a good thing, it's rotating. That same year, racing across the surface of the ocean, something that it took some skill to capture. All of these videos have been leaked in the past, but the US government now confirms they are genuine. Of course, the US has a long history of reported UFO sightings. This image, captured by a couple in Oregon in 1950, regarded as one of the most significant. They were certain this was a UFO. If it's up there and one person sees it, a lot of people see it. And we have astronauts, we have uh, uh, politicians, we have uh, show business personalities, people on every walk of life. That's now, it. the experience that I'm dealing with are people who have had these abduction experiences. And I know it sounds funny, and it isn't funny, because <laughs> it's very much as if they're in the position of a kidnapped victim and even a kind of a rape victim. Because part of the procedure is these people are paralyzed. They cannot move. They're taken into a UFO, put on a table. There's a physical examination that is invasive and very scary, and they are simply helpless. But do they know what's going on when they're there? They just can't yeah. do anything about they it? They can't do anything about it. And then they're taken back out of the craft, and this is a procedure, incidentally, that starts in childhood, and they're picked up over a number of years as if they're an object to study the way we would study an animal. So like, like you tag an ear and follow exactly. migration? Exactly. Now, wh what do you think they're doing? Why well, do you think they're doing this? They how, do you know, how do you know they're doing this? Well, uh, we have done all kinds of investigation of the cases from the point of view of of trying to eliminate any psychological explanation, also trying to check out all the physical evidence. And these people are usually, when they're picked up as a child, a deep cut is made as if a layer of cells is removed from their body for a parent study. The scars are extremely similar from case to case to case. It's very sh uh, shocking. I mean, tell me about these. These, these okay. are separate incidents. These here. are uh, these are drawings uh, that were made by two different people in two different cases. We have many, many, many cases like this uh, where people are making drawings that are so incredibly similar. The details that come through in these cases are incredibly similar too, down to really the finest, most finely tuned, tiny detail of maybe the equipment used on in the interior. There are a lot of different types that are reported, but the usual thing is a disc-shaped object like 35 feet or so in diameter. The basic, the basic theory that we have is that uh, the government hasn't talked to them. They don't know our little friends, whatever, whoever they are. There's been no communication, so we don't know what their intentions are. And if all a president could do is say that the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the CIA has told them that apparent space vehicles are operating at will in our environment, there's nothing we can do. They can outfly every, anything we have. They can paralyze and take aboard our people when they want to at will. They haven't talked to us. We'll let you know when they decide to talk to us and tell us what their intentions are long term. And I said, if that's the only thing a president could say, I would rather be in the 
liquor business and the real estate business at a time like that. I mean, we would have panic. I got another question. They, Gary, they do come to people's houses and they have taken people. And when a UFO comes down, as reported, let's say the neighbors see the thing over somebody's house. When it comes down, if there are tree branches up above, they're broken and snapped downwards. The ground is affected. The person comes back, is taken, and is, comes back with a deep cut or something. There's a lot of physical evidence that's going on. Feet up, a typical thing, a family's driving back uh, home. They have to be back at 11 o'clock. It's a quarter of 11. They're 15 minutes away from home. They see a, a light shining down on the car. Suddenly, there's no more light on the car. They don't remember turning off. They get home, and they suddenly find it's 1230. They don't understand what happened at the time. They all feel very peculiar. They're very frightened to go back to that area again. Then they begin having dreams about having the car stopped, being taken aboard, and the UFO, and so forth. So, and then we will, they will somehow write to me or someone else, and we will look into the case. So, so you have like a little questionnaire that you, you put oh, yeah. out to see if, if people exactly. feel that there's And there are lots of ways of using questions to try to separate out people who are mentally ill, or, uh -huh. and there are people like that. Yeah. Now, so, do UFOs exist? It seems the answer is yes and no, in a sense. A long time ago, unidentified flying objects were renamed and reclassified as unidentified aerial phenomena. It is purely my opinion, but I believe this was done to throw off researchers making freedom of information requests. This means that the powers that be can officially say that they have no interest or knowledge of UFOs because they have reclassified them under a different acronym. Very simple yet very effective. How can a researcher look for something that they do not know the name of? According to an ex-Pentagon official named Luis Elizondo, UFOs exist, but the government doesn't want you to know about it, and furthermore are in a process of damage control. He believes that they are a serious national security risk and have been covered up due to religious objections, concerned over the government tarnishing its own reputation and fears of inciting panic, not to mention decades of lies. He resigned from the Pentagon in frustration over this.